Welcome to Nursing School Explained and this video on priming a primary IV set. And what we mean with priming is to get the air out of the IV tubing. So when there is an IV tubing, there is air in there. And of course, we don't want to infuse any air into the patient. So priming just means getting the air out of that system. So you always want to use aseptic technique, performing hand hygiene as always. And then it always helps to put on gloves because it just keeps everything a little bit cleaner. And then we use our primary bag. In this case, it's wrapped here, so I will have to open it up. And the easiest way to do this is just to unhook it and then look at the different ports. So this one here with this kind of a rubber port will allow you to add medication or add anything to it, which we're not going to do for the most part in primary IV lines. And then this little blue stopper here, just think about blue is fluid, is where we're gonna hook up our primary IV tubing. So it's easiest if you find a space, an IV pole to hook this into. And then you can go ahead and pull this tab. Just remember that the IV, um, the outside of this um, port might have been contaminated or might have some, some bacteria sitting there. So when we're using our IV tubing, our um, spiker, we don't wanna touch this with um, the outside of this tubing. And then, so I use my IV tubing, I take it out of the wrapper it's usually pretty nicely set up like this. I take off any paper wrap that holds it together. And the very important first part to do is to close the clamp right here. You can see it's kind of loose. If I switch it the other way, it closes the clamp. The reason I need to do this is because if I start putting this in my IV bag, the fluid is going to start running and it's gonna cause a lot of air bubbles that are very difficult to get out. So now I'm going to hold this in a secure way to where I'm not dropping the IV tubing, specifically not the port that's going to attach to the patient's IV on the floor or on any surface where it could collect some bacteria. So make sure that the cap is also on. If the cap is off, you don't know what's been happening, use a different tubing, please. Patient safety is always first. So I've closed my clamp and then this, the, the, this is the drip chamber. And then I have this uh, cap on the spiker right here. So I will take it off and then the spiker gets exposed. And as you can see, it's at an angle. So it's very easy to push this up. So again, I don't want to touch the outside of this port. So with my non-dominant hand, I'll stabilize this tubing, get this extra tubing out of the way here. And I push it in to the port. Sometimes you just have to kind of twist back and forth to get this to open up. This is not a very easy one to push. And also I don't want to touch the spiker, the end of the spiker that's going in the IV tubing because um, I could theoretically carry some bacteria in there. And if you look at it, I have made it flush to where the spiker now is with the flush with that port of the IV. So a couple of drops already came out, but it doesn't really matter because they, they just kind of collect on the side here. From here, I press the drip chamber, which will push air into the back and let fluid come out until I fill the drip chamber about halfway. If you fill it too far, then you can't really see if it's dripping down or where this fluid is going. So then after the drip chamber is halfway filled, I can carefully open up my clamp. I am going to carefully open up the clamp and I can actually track the fluid as it's coming through the tubing. Once it comes to the clamp, it's going to slow down a little bit. I can see it coming here now. Here's the fluid level 
as it comes through this last port and when it comes to the very end the fluid level is right here I'm going to very much slow it down until I see just one drop coming out of the port that way I know that it's primed completely then I'll close off the tubing I probably have a little water drop coming down here and that way it's ready to go I'm not going to unhook this until I'm ready to put it on my patient now if I prime this in the patient's room it's fine um, I could probably just uh, clean off their lure lock uh, IV access and hook this up and then adjust the pump to a certain rate um, for right now I'm just going to hook it here keeping the cap on to make sure it doesn't collect any any um, debris anywhere and then I'm ready to go so this is the priming of the primary line the secondary line is very similar and there's two different options on how to prime a secondary line so please watch, watch the other videos on how to do that skill thanks for watching